The first question is very practical. The slide you showed about the boy, uh, age 17, uh, Xeroderma pigmentoso, and the uh, lady with uh, skin cancer, you said you put cannabis on. You didn't say which strain, in what kind of form, and I would really like to know. Well, that's the wrong way of looking at it because we don't have the metabolic correlations with things. What is a fundamental truth is that THC will turn on both CB1 and CB2. You heard earlier today, I think they showed, somebody showed a slide that CB2 activates CB, I mean, that uh, CBD activates CB2. I don't remember that that specifically was true, but what it does do is it inhibits CB1. So that means your endocannabinoids are going to focus more on CB2 anyway. So just CBD does turn on fat burning. If you consume enough of it, you will lose weight, you'll sleep better, and you'll eliminate a whole host of, of problems. Okay. So, so in terms of the strains, what you need to do is you need to modulate your metabolism. And the CB1, CB2 ratio nonsense, you need enough of both. If you have cancer... But you're talking to me about what I have to ingest or I was thinking about the cream so something topic to put on the skin what would be the perfect ratio for there is let's no say, perfect ratio there disease. is no such thing as a perfect ratio that's all nonsense every person is different and you saw that every bud is different so yes different strains will certainly have different effects but you can't make a generalization from what I've seen other than the big category. Is it pot that's going to make you sleepy or is it pot that's going to make you awake? Which, you know, no, we lost it. No, we didn't. We didn't. just have oh, to I talk just, in. Okay. No. Yeah. That's the big concern. Does it make you sleepy or not? Most people are using the cancer strains and you, that whether they be hybrid or not, you want a sleepy strain seems to be what's preferred. I know that myself having uh, AFib, that a good uh, psychedelic uh, sativa, which I love, will tend to promote my AFib from what I've seen in the past. So we are all individuals. You, you can't make terrible generalizations other than this stuff will help most things, especially when you modulate your diet and supplement with the right nutraceuticals to manipulate the pathways that I described. Okay, thank you. Just uh, one more question, short one, if I may. Um, so it doesn't actually uh, goes around CBD, but uh, about apoptosis and uh, intermittent fasting, starving, it's a big buzz over it, and I was just wondering what do you think about it? Thank you. Intermediate fasting, paleo diets, and uh, ketone diets, those are all excellent. And I recommend people to certainly try that. Like, go. I did it. I went on a ketogenic diet for about two weeks. I didn't particularly uh, get into the rigidity. I'm, I'm retarded. I can't follow orders. Uh, you know, so a diet like that didn't work, but I got the concept. So what I do is I modulate what I eat in a way to make sure I consume enough fats and that the fats I eat come from, or, you know, organic grass-fed cows so that I have omega-3s with all the dairy I eat. I eat tons of dairy. I eat tons of grains and seeds. And I've reversed a number of conditions. You know, I've been reversed tons of things on myself. You can reverse aging. To whatever degree, I don't know, but I know that I'm younger today than I was five years ago, without a doubt. Uh, I would like just to add, uh, because uh, Dr. Melamid showed the uh, uh, photo of, or slide of uh, pigmentosa. Uh, this uh, this uh, boy was uh, from, is from Zimbabwe, he is still okay, and he was using very well-known strains and uh, we know how he applied because uh, we were also the part of it so he used a mixture of few strains in the suppositories and uh, he used also topical yep. and uh, we, we have uh, the whole story from the beginning to the uh, to the end so if you want i can send you some more information so we proceed to the next question please just i'd like to comment uh -huh. uh, perhaps a dialogue for a better day. Um, we also have the uh, popular, now becoming uh, popular uh, microbiome, which is also affected. And that uh, also is another factor which plays into what you have been, been describing. I imagine you're, you have something to say about that. 
Well, again, it's a matter of whether you generate inflammation. It's a matter of whether or not you're generating inflammation. Depending on the microbiome that you have, certain ones are intrinsically anti-inflammatory, other ones are pro-inflammatory. Once you inflame the lining there, then you disrupt the barrier. Your stomach has the, it's some, something like 70 percent, 75 percent of your immune system is in your gut because that's the major source of input into the system, you through via the food. And you start to disrupt the cell-cell contacts, et cetera, via inflammation. In part, if you have enough inflammation, you'll turn on fat burning in those cells and they'll shut off their differentiated functions like cell-cell adhesion, which promotes the leakage, which means the wrong bugs get in, and it's a vicious cascade of pro-inflammation. And that, we could add another thing. <laughs> Because we know, uh, or we assume nowadays, that the inflammation in the gut is also affected by the outflow of the autonomic nervous system, which is also affected by the cannabinoids. Well, yeah, because everything is affected by the cannabinoids, and in general, what they do is they are anti-inflammatory because of how they regulate the electron transport system to protect you, but that's still dangerous. And then how they turn on fat burning, which resurrects you. <laughs> Hello, um, I just have a question uh, regarding the, I just have to check the name of the, um, Mrs. Sikorin from Israel was talking about um, using cannabis in elderly people and she had a slide and it said what kind of medication was lowered due to using cannabis and uh, other medication, I mean. And um, there was uh, also, oh, I noticed that antiemetics and uh, antidepressants were not downgraded. I mean, it stays, from what I understood from the slide, the same. And I was just wondering if you maybe have an explanation for that. Or I know that she's not here, but uh, maybe one of you can. Yes, um, Thank many you. years ago, um, I was a part of this uh, natural experiment that it was the first time in the world history that we made it uh, under uh, uh, st serious uh, surveillance uh, this uh, experiment with uh, more than 60 patients in a nursing home in Israel at the Rim nursing home in Kibbutz uh, 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 Nan and I was a, a neuropsychiatrist and psych psychogeriatrics working with these patients so uh, the data she provided in her slide uh, addressed to the current practice of Niamedic. So I, I would I like to answer about our practice in a nursing home because I was a living witness uh, along with uh, uh, Inbal in uh, those time. We were able to treat about 60 uh, uh, patients, uh, severely disabled, uh, uh, disabilitated people in this nursing home. We just did not know how to begin with them because there, those time nobody could provide us good, ass good assistance. What kind of delivery, cannabis delivery, uh, will be most appropriate for the fully uh, disabled uh, people uh, there in nursing home? So we uh, used a lot of cannabis that were provided free of charge uh, by the largest Israeli uh, grower company those time, Tikkun Ulam. And uh, many uh, and the people from Tikkun Ulam tried to uh, use all uh, the uh, recreational experience in order to um, uh, provide me medicinal effect effect to these uh, nursing patients. So first, we tried to use uh, cannabis uh, supplied by to the uh, uh, to the feed uh, in the uh, raw as a raw material. No effect had been happened as expectedly. Now we understand it. And now and uh, then we used uh, we began to use uh, evaporated cannabis because they could not uh, smoke and. Uh, we used the uh, evaporator, uh, Vulcan evaporator, that was provided us by other company, uh, and uh, this we observed a lot of uh, positive effect. So first, we uh, uh, were able to reduce sleep sleep medication. So the sleep improved the first, the appetite increased the second. 
Third one was a significant reduction of all uh, antidepressive and uh, antipsychotic medication. They were full of them. It was my job, along with the geriatric uh, who worked with me, uh, or the house physician for this nursing home, he reduced mostly all of uh, anti-diabetic medications, glucose reduction medication, and also he reduced also ma majority of the anti-hypertensive uh, medications. Although, uh, after it, uh, the, the functioning, the uh, much improved, they were less agitated, and the uh, feeding much improved. So we, so we observed as a, absolutely, in the majority of the cases, very good improvement. In the other cases, it was good improvement. So I don't, could not answer uh, if uh, antiemetic medications were reduced or not, because those times they, uh, major, only few of them had an antiemetic. But I suppose, I personally observed a very good improvement for large population of nursing home. This was first experiment in the world, fully approved by the, our Ministry of Health. And I suppose this is a very good experience, should be enlarged in other places. Thank you. Dobar dan. Jaz bi pa prašal, glede fenotipa rastlin, ne? Sam trenutek, trenutek, prosim. Šta je? Jaz. Ok. Vprašal bi, glede... Ko govorite tukaj fenotip rastlin, ne, in ker se ve, da tudi, če bi imel dva klona, pa jih daš v različne pohoje, se pravi sonce, hrana, zemlja, razvije različen, ki na bilidem profil in trpenski profil, ne. In zakaj ne razmišljate, da se rastline razvrščajo glede na delovanje v telesu, se pravi, ki se tiva pozitiva veselja, ustvarjalnost, indika, spanje, umestno delovanje vemo, ne, in tako bi tudi ljudje, glede raka, se lažje zdravali, ker bi v bistvu, ko ti uporabljaš v ene dnevu, v uporabi recimo dve smole, CBD smolo sativo, zvečer indiko, ne, imaš ti dvakrat več šanso možnost, da se pozdravaš raka, kot kar če ti ustrajaš na neki indiki, pa na eni poti konzumacije. In zakaj se ne razmišlja, kako bi V bistvu terapijo naredil čim bolj biološko, bi rekel, razpoložljivo kanabidoidev v telesu, v smislu, če zožiješ 100 kanabidoidev, da jih čim več v telo dobiš, primerjava 80. Ker če vemo, če ti oralno smolo vzamaš, poješ, je razgradna v želodcu in jetrih in mogoče vkrat dobiš 20-30%. In ljudem je treba povedati metode, ki rešajo rešitve, kako lahko sami to rešujejo, da imajo čim več možnost uspeha, da se pozdravijo raka, pač take informacije išajo. Zdaj, če ne morate dati, recimo v miligramih kašne so prave doze, se jim vsaj neke smernice dajo, da se lažje, bi rekel, samo zdravijo. Bi se tukaj lahko malo več razgovorili, prosim. Yeah, well, uh, actually, that is what we are doing nowadays. So it is very common, even without doctor's consultation, uh, well, back to Israel again, unfortunately, that's where I come from, so that's experience I can tell you about. Uh, very early on, the companies in the uh, dispensaries uh, established a certain form of uh, accompanying uh, the patients and giving them initial instruction and so on. And very early on, they started giving them uh, preparations for the day and preparations for the night. Um, that is, it comes just naturally and for, as a matter of fact, many of the patients I've been treating have been receiving, let's say, um, uh, longer acting uh, preparations, oils or whatever for the night and uh, inhaling uh, throughout the day uh, and adapting uh, their dosing to their daily routine. So definitely, and the, it's not always one 
uh, one type of cannabis. Sometimes they prefer one for a certain circumstance and something, something else for other circumstances. I imagine that's common practice, right? Look, uh, up to now, we don't know exactly what should be other cannabinoids because we are talking about CBD, THC. We are starting to talk about CBG, cannabigerol, and some other cannabinoids. As I told you in my lecture, it's sure that uh, just only four cannabinoids are real cannabinoids, cannabigerol, cannabidiol, cannabichromen, and tetrahydrocannabinol, respective uh, there are acids. And we don't know too much about terpenes. Uh, we know about terpenes and terpenoids, uh, what uh, they can do in organisms separately, but uh, there was not some uh, serious study to study combination of terpenes and uh, cannabinoids, uh, only were analysis uh, of such uh, different strains. And uh, still it's not enough because, as I said, there are other compounds, uh, as, uh, flavonoids, flavonoid glyco glycosides, polyphenols, and this everything must be studied. We are simply still on the start, so different patients uh, react differently on different strains, so still we are not in genomics, so uh, today it's uh, just to try and to succeed on to do mistakes, so uh, it will not be such easy. All of the molecules that we find in plants in general when they're going to seed, as well as in fermentation products, wind up producing, because of where they are in their life cycle, chemicals that will help protect them. Those are the chemicals that we are then use as well because we have common pathways. And as these plants mature, if you look at a, if you look at a fruit, it's loaded with sugar. How come it's loaded with sugar? Because it didn't burn the sugar, because it turned on fat burning to protect the seed. That sugar now is designed to be stored. So when you're eating fruits and vegetables, especially fruits that are sweet, you're also taking in the things that turn off the sugar burning. So there's so many different, uh, if you look in Chinese medicine and all the other forms of natural native medicines, every medicine that's been used for either diabetes or for cancer turns on fat burning. If no questions, I would like to. I would we like have, to. Uh, we have one question more. Many persons have no interaction. For example, asthma in cannabis. A matter of fact, Mr. Dr. Kachne is cautious about breathing. Yeah. Well. Uh, Many of our cancer patients are, uh, suffer from uh, chronic lung disease, lung cancer patients, of course, and uh, they respond, well, often we would get rejections from the ministry, representatives of the Ministry of Health rejecting our proposal to treat them with smoke, but they're smoking the, the cannabis and that's uh, the most effective. Uh, to relax the bronchioles and improve the breathing, actually, you need THC. Um, that is a common observation, and there are some uh, studies on the impact of, of the THC on the musculature of these uh, airways that support that. We even have patients with silicosis who have discontinued their treatment and have been spared uh, um, lung transplants uh, due to the use of uh, cannabis in this manner. Once again. <laughs> well, it is information once again, but the two things that I've seen extremely effective from my son, who developed asthma, he was 15 at the time, as a result of using ADD medicines, and ADHD medicines, and it turns out that CBD capsule 
was great, especially take, he had exercise-induced asthma he would get, and in combination with NAC. Everybody should know about NAC. NAC is N-acetylcysteine, and it has profound antioxidant properties. Your lung, it, you know, everybody's heard of, of glutathione, and glutathione is like a main antioxidant, in particular within your lungs. But glutathione, for it to work, it has to be recharged. And it gets recharged with, with um, the, the NAC, the N-acetylcysteine. And if you go through the scientific literature, they, when they're developing and trying to figure out how a drug works, they have to always relate it back to a known for a pa pathway. And it turns out that what they use for all of these drug studies is NAC. Well, that simply means that every drug that they're showing you, yeah, it does this because it works like NAC. Well, just take the NAC. You don't need the drugs. <laughs> it works great. <laughs> Especially for things like uh, obstructive pulmonary disease, you know, OCD. It's amazing. It opens you right up. I had lung issues my whole life until somebody said, try this. Now I take NAC four times a day. Four times a day. <laughs> What's the snack? Snack, N-acetylcysteine. Uh, I would like to uh, reflect to two points that were uh, touched uh, during these uh, two days. First, about the data. What data we have? What data we should rely on? How it was, how we obtain this data? Who obtained this data? Who worked on this data? My background is a strongly researched background. I was the chief of research of our mental health center, and I had been a principal investigator for many, uh, for many trials, industry-initiated, investigator-initiated trials. So I would like to say that majority of the data had been edited. It was edited from the very, very beginning. So I just ask you to be very, very cautious when you're reading any kind of papers, and they be, will be, and should be very, very careful who are authors. Majority of the authors of the paper are just fake figures. I'm saying it's very responsibly. This is, was just because of the one editorial policy and pub publication policy of the universities. For the many years, I suppose uh, my friend Bob is uh, also suppose, uh, support such a view because he, as a university professor, knew, uh, knew exactly what's happened uh, with the editorial policy within the universities. So we need real data that came coming not from so-called evidence-based medicine. We called we need uh, data that coming from practice-based medicine. We need much more studies that should be done on the way that uh, studies were published by Professor Neubauer and, and uh, Bojo, uh, arti uh, artisanal uh, studies, natural and naturalistic observational trials. We have thousands and thousands uh, cannabis-treated patients in our practice. We need to accumulate this knowledge. This is a knowledge. This is very valuable knowledge. Of course, they, they, they used different cannabis with the different dosages, with a different uh, way of administration. The, nevertheless, there are very valuable data. We need to accumulate it. We should rely on this. We should trust our patients. We should trust our, what we see by our eyes. We are clinical, clinicians. We, should, we could assess this data as being very reliable because a odd ratio, so this uh, sample size for each such trials, so huge that it uh, exceeds much more of uh, so-called randomized uh, control trials that no, nobody uh, did it in uh, uh, cannabis-based medicine other than companies that were able to raise such trials and, fi uh, and finance such trials. So we need different strategies with the cannabis-based medicines based on the small proof of concept, short, long, short term uh, trials that will be based on the, our practice and the patient's experience in this field. This is a just different paradigm and uh, this only a way to have real data. Thank you. Uh, 
Yes, be, uh, I would like just to add this. Uh, so, uh, our opinion is because it's the same part of question that uh, this uh, ratio between THC and CBD are not leading anywhere because this is just pharma bullshit. Uh, we have to adjust uh, the intake of cannabinoids and so on to each person, so called, uh, because we don't know how endocannabinoid system works, we don't know our. Uh, the density of receptors, activity of receptors, we don't know actually anything. Therefore, why so many strains are work so differently? But there is, it's not true that we don't have any data. We presented a few years ago a uh, study about 150 patients with, uh, uh, with cancer. We published a study, so evidence-based study, not the science-based study. Uh, for glioblastoma, we published uh, artisan study for uh, this. And uh, also the question, what is good indica and sativa? What is good, uh, red apple, green, or, uh, you know, even sativas and indicas, we have hundreds of different strains, so this is not even the, the good question. We have to find the, you know, when we will have, what is uh, Dr. Tanya Bagger working on? When we will have, when we will can determine our endocannabinoid system, I think then we can help people much better. But we are still far from there. This was our because we collected data, medical records. Uh, we are making cannabinoid profiles now for five years, something like this. So we know what people were taking, even if they brought their own medicine. We put it on test, so we, we have data. But somebody wasn't, don't want to listen. My question was somehow related to the political and regulative. In Slovenia, we are very often in the political that politiki nočejo sodelovati pri regulativi v smeri legalizacije konoplje. Sama pa nisem takega mnenja. Moje mnenje je namreč, da uh, imamo večjo pasivno strani stroke, tako farmacije, kot kar uh, zdravnikov, saj da bi politiki lahko spremenili neko zakonodajo potrebujejo imeti neko osnovo in biti ozaveščeni v nekaterih stvarih. Sami ste lepo povedali redosled regulative, sloviti člen 61, treba pa je vedeti tudi, kako je regulativa v Sloveniji nastala. Ne? Preko neke dobre prakse FDA je nastala eme in potem v samosvojitvi Slovenije so se prevzemale regulative, ki so povezani z določenimi osnova, uh, ustanovami, ki pa zelo slabo sodelujejo na, na nek način z, z politiko. Pa vas sprašujem, kakšna bi bila pot, da bi prišlo do neke zdrave pameti in regulacije oziroma To legalizacije? To, kar jaz odgovoril, zato, okay. ker verjetno najbolj poznam problematiko. Dokler Uh, dokler bo politika samo kimala naši nesposobnim uradniko na ministru za zdravje, se ne bo nič spremenilo. Vsi vemo, da politika nima nobene moči. Jaz sem bil na x odborih za zdravstvo, na x odborih sestanki s parlamentarci. Uh, Lumir je bil v našem parlamentu, pol je govoril v našem parlamentu, ampak uradnikom, ki jim ni mar za tiste, ki jih plačujejo, je to čisto vsajeno. To se vidi, prvi prepovedujem od sebe, da deset let upozorjamo ministrstvo za zdravje. Taka zmeda na tem področju se bo rešila samo, ko bo nekaj ključnih ljudi iz ministrstva za zdravje letelo, ker se ve, kdo so to, ki celo stvar zavirajo. To moram manjkrat javno povedati, ker to, kar počnejo, je zdaj že tak malo na meji kriminala. And yes, I have a question. Um, thank you so much for, for the input we got. Um, we talked yesterday about responsibility. We are living in times where we see various shifts throughout society, um, 
many things happening in the moment, also more people becoming more aware about cannabinoid medicine and its real value. How do you see the importance to push this shift that is happening right now, also from a scientific side? Most of you have been into this since many, many years, um, being part of these groundbreaking discoveries. How do we manage to push this shift on a more humanistic, center um, away from these big corporations? How do we get the power back to the people and how can ca cannabis and hemp be part of this? That's for all of you. <laughs> According to my opinion, to go fast forward, we need uh, research without borders, clinical studies without borders, exchange of samples and knowledge is without borders. It means without any problems because scientists are limited. If I am in some country, I won't bring samples. It's a problem for me. I need import uh, permit, ex export permit. It's very complicated, so many scientists resign for that. And the same is in medicine. They should have without borders, uh, share knowledge, share patients. If it's if somebody is better on some field, and and then it can go forward uh, much more faster. But I don't know if it's uh, possible, if it will be in the near future. But we must do everything for that because we know that there are some breaks that uh, are, is part of one which uh, doesn't want. To, to go forward fast, so we must break these breaks. Uh, yes, been more Thing, in, in living systems, things don't work linearly. And what's happening now, just by virtue of the spread of the truth among family members, community members, and activists spreading it around the world, we're reaching a critical point where enough people will now understand it. So, for example, if Big Pharma has something, I'm not going to buy their crap. I'm going to grow my own. Even if it's illegal, I'm going to grow my own, and my friends are going to grow their own. So what happens is the more the government regulates, the more the underground comes up, and provides black market, which of course the government likes that because then they have their police force and their regulatory force fed once again with our tax money to screw us. Es bi rekel tako, ne, moje mišljenje je, da se da vsaka raka pozdraviti s konoplo. Bi pa iz prakse Kolege prašajo gor, tist, ki dela iz bolniki, recimo, da imamo rakove, a da lahko kakšen podatek, koliko število bolniko se je zdravil s konoplo in kakšen je bil uspeh. Konkreten, se pravi, tisoč ljudi živi, recimo, pet let še, pedeset, sto ljudi ali pač kakšen tak podatek. The last meeting at Prague, you had a number of us activists together from around the world and who used their own local production methods and their own isolation methods. And I said, I have a question. Of all of us here, forgetting about any specifics, what percentage of cancers do you find cannabis is curing? And the average answer was about 80%. It went from 75 to 85, and universally everybody agreed that most of the failures were people who had done chemo. Well, Let's pay our respects to Malthus. You know, we're not going to overpopulate this uh, planet and we are not going to live eternally. Um, and I've been active in the field of palliative care. Uh, so our question, or when I am confronted with people with progressive disease, uh, what we have to deal with is decisions in, this, in the context of their illness, what is correct to do? This is something that we have control over. 
we can never control or foresee the outcome. And I think that should be the focus of our attention. What do decide, <coughs> what we decide and how we decide it, on what do we base our decisions. Look, concerning treatment, there is allowed only palliative treatment where it is allowed and patients even for palliative treatment uh, in some countries uh, they don't have enough material for whole months they must even buy something on black market what is not a good situation and concerning curative effect this we know only from anecdotal cases because uh, there is no uh, curative treatment with cannabis. So we are still very far from ideal situation even in palliative care. Uh, may I add something? Uh, in uh, in medical system is not allowed, but people are reading uh, newspapers, Google, they are educated, sometimes more than uh, those on ministries who should be, and uh, we collected, as mentioned before, 150 pay, uh, medical records from patients with the records what they have uh, used and so on, and the results were very similar to those what Bob said. Uh, so most of the people were okay. Some of them for uh, maybe for a few years, but most of them, it's now six years from then, when we done this observational study and most of them are still okay but even if they are uh, cured from let's say one cancer you have never guaranteed to get something other than this uh, polluted world <laughs> another thing to add regarding the uh, perceived uh, uh, curing of cancer is that uh, there often is some uh, measure of um, misdiagnosis and a lot of our therapies indeed are quite toxic. Mm. So instead of believing that the people have been cured, possibly they have been possibly spared uh, really the bad effects of uh, misguided aggressive therapies. And then, you know, it, it is a, a different perspective. It is not that we have cured them, we have enabled them to continue living a healthier life mm -hmm. with less suffering. And I could not tell exactly what the balance between these two is. I want to just give an example that is quite dramatic but shows the possibilities because we should be looking at each individual possibility as what could happen instead of you know looking at the mice and doing all the things we're doing look at individual people measure the right measurements before and after so we can understand more but ultimately it all does come down to to this metabolic flow so i was approached in november by a guy whose brother these are some of the ethiopian zion copics so these are the rastafarians from colombia and his brother had stage four uh, prostate cancer he had a tpsa reading of uh, 177 and he took cannabis, the normal Rick Simpson type protocol is three months, about 90 grams of, of THC in the form of the concentrates. He took that in three weeks, because he's a Rastaman. And in three weeks, his PSA went from 177 to three, and all of his metastasis was gone. So three weeks can cure stage four cancer. So, unfortunately, I'm representing the more grim aspect of things here. Uh, the problem with this is, we do observe successes, but that also creates expectations. And high hopes are uh, a definite uh, prescription for uh, very hard falls uh, when people are disappointed. So we have to keep a balanced stance when we approach these issues and consider very carefully what we say. We do not have to be hesitant, we do not have to be indistinct, 
but we should be wary of creating expectations which we can never uh, assure people of. So we can discuss the sense, and I'm repeating myself, of the decisions that are being, ma being made, but it is better for people to depend on feeling uh, at one with their decisions rather than depending on the outcome of uh, the treatment. It, what makes sense to me is the first treatment for virtually every illness should be cannabis. And we have enough of a range of what's needed. You know, it might be epilepsy, a couple of tokes. It might be Tourette's syndrome, a couple of tokes. Or it might be advanced cancer, which requires a lot. Or HIV, a Kaposi sarcoma. Uh, you know, I have a guy, friend now, who had uh, HIV for 25 years. And he was resistant to all the existing drugs. And we were together in Washington, D.C., in Capitol, in the building lobbying. Uh, for new drugs for HIV. When he pulled out his arm and he goes, oh shit, he had a Carposi. Now when an HIV infected individual comes down with Carposi, it shows that their immune system has collapsed and they're gonna die very painfully soon because that Carposi ultimately goes internally and then you're dead. So I said, David, don't worry, just put this on there. And I pulled out, because I have my oil with me, you know, I put this on there, it's right in Washington, D.C., in the halls of the belly of the beast. And he puts it on, and I go back to Colorado, where I lived at the time, and he goes back to New York. And three days later, I get a phone call. He goes, Bob, what the fuck is going on here? I'm holding a Carposi sarcoma in my hand. They're not supposed to fall off. And when he went, to, this guy happens to have a PhD in molecular epidemiology, along with a whole lot of other things. He's got 189 so IQ. So and he, he goes to the cancer, to the HIV meeting in uh, South Africa, I think it was two years ago and um, didn't bring his medicine with him because he was landing in various strict countries. So he went without medicine for two weeks and he came back and he had 17 carposes. This insane person who does a gram a day now for year after year after year, he took in one day 50 grams of high concentrated oil and four days later without too much pain when he was human again, all the carpose was gone. Um, so, uh, at the end uh, of the meeting, uh, maybe we can make uh, some summary. We know that uh, we are facing now with uh, these problems we were talking uh, these two days. Uh, uh, very, very rigid uh, uh, science and uh, state approach for uh, researchers, as well as uh, for uh, allowing patients to get their medicine. So, uh, as we know uh, from many re uh, researchers till now, endocannabinoid system is one of the most important system in our body. Still, doctors do not, uh, uh, our laboratories uh, do not uh, measure uh, account of the endocannabinoids in our b blood, in our uh, body. Uh, uh, as uh, for health people as well as for uh, ill people. When they are uh, forbidden us to, to, to uh, heal ourselves with cannabis uh, and uh, allow other regular medicine, uh, there are a lot of side effects of this medicine. We also see that uh, uh, that's the question that I would ask as uh, each of you to, to answer as a person, not only as a, a scientist or as a doctor. So, uh, how can uh, doctors really heal ourselves when they don't know the state of our endocannabinoid uh, system, our endocannabinoids, uh, as we see from a lot of researches, that many illnesses, uh, all autoimmune di diseases, all others uh, have lack or endocannabinoid deficiency. And uh, so how can they heal us with the dignity of the, their profession and they not allow us to heal ourselves with something that is not uh, completely researched as cannabis is, but as we know, 
such effects as we see, and also we know the side effects. So the question is, how can they uh, heal us and uh, without knowing that? And uh, what do you think is, uh, let's summary, is cannabis safe medicine or is not safe medicine? And uh, what should you choose for yourself or uh, someone uh, you would suggest uh, isolate cannabinoids or full extracts? So that's uh, some practical uh, uh, answers and uh, thoughts for the patient. For example, in my country, where cannabis in Serbia is not allowed, now even uh, salad oil will not be allowed for producing, and uh, that's uh, completely stupidity. But we fa faced with that, as well with the uh, rigid uh, laws than it was uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to um, thank you for the question. Uh, we already uh, reflect to some point you asked uh, now. I would like to say that we are doctors never forbid you to treat yourself. We just do not use the term heal. Healing as a curation is supposed to eradication of pathogenic uh, agent. And we are usually are not able, except some situation with uh, infectious, uh, uh, surgery. Usually in medicine we, we are speaking about treatment and we never, as a doctor's community, I'm speaking uh, here on behalf of International Association of Cannabinoid Medicine, and we never forbid for anybody to try to heal or to treat themselves in all available measures they're supposed to be uh, important to them on their own responsibility. So let me to emphasizes the responsibility is of the patient. So each patient should understand that there is a, a, a some sides of this position. So uh, sometimes people that try to heal themselves, treat themselves, are just worsening their condition because they delay treatment that w could be reversible and they are coming to our attention very, very, last, uh, very, very uh, uh, on the last moment. So it is very important to understand that we should not uh, lose the time and uh, you should uh, be able to have a very good, reliable and responsible medical consultation in all kind of uh, diseases or disorders you would like to treat. Second, uh, I would like to give you some example. I suppose that very few of us exactly understands how the engine of our car is working. Very few of us understand the peculiarities and details of the working of this engine. It doesn't prevent us to be very good drivers, responsible, and uh, very accurate. Uh, so we, need to, we, we should not be mechanicals, uh, experienced mechanicals, in order to drive your car uh, very uh, carefully and uh, according to the rules and very safely. So pra practically, in the medicine, medicine is, is not uh, accurate science, you know. Uh, medicine never was an accurate science. We are just trying to do what we uh, were uh, able to do uh, based on our knowledge, our background, our clinical experience, our fair position, our listening patients, trust them, believe them. And uh, we have, uh, this is a pro our approach. So we try to, uh, to assist you where you are standing on, and you should understand our position. Uh, we should not know all peculiarities of endocannabinoid system, but we can use cannabis for, for, med uh, uh, for medical purposes. The problem is that cannabis is not a medicine. Cannabis had, no, had never been a medicine. Not miracle in a medicine. Uh, med cannabis is much more wider and more important than medicine. It is not a simple drug. We have uh, various uh, cultivars, various uh, methods of delivery that we tr need to try to adjust it to each particular patient. So this is our approach. Maybe my, my colleagues have also to uh, add. Well, one thing that goes beyond the question of the endocannabinoid system and uh, cannabis and so on is most of the people you are referring to have the title 
of a doctor and they're serving in a certain health system, but they are not functioning as doctors, they are functioning as clerks, as representatives of a system, unfortunately. And uh, uh, this provides a certain insight which goes way beyond that. We need uh, to have a system which enables people to function, the doctors to function as such. It is a problem in a very large, highly populated uh, society where uh, such services are so limited and the doctors are uh, taxed way beyond their ability to provide service to the number of people approach, approaching them. Still, we have to keep in mind, these are technicians at the best. They are not normally uh, serving as doctors, are fulfilling certain uh, orders, uh, acting according to guidelines, and uh, looking to uh, what is considered um, risk management. Risk management is a very odd concept uh, which was introduced to the medical system. It regards the management of the risks of those providing the health, not of the patients. Ste bi pa še jaz prosim nekaj vprašala. Uh, vse čas uh, vemo vsi, da živimo v svetu, kjer je polno stvari, slabih hodihamo zrakom, jemo hrano, smo pod stresom. Ste mogoče zasledili, kako pa konoplja v preventivi pri ljudeh, ki bi radi si obdržali zdravje? Well, what I've found works for me, I, you know, five years ago I was in the hospital with heart failure. I have had a, a Renault syndrome, arthritis, post-Lyme syndrome, psoriasis, and a few other things, I'm sure. And none of those, well, so, I still have some arthritic relationships, but everything else is gone. So we can reverse things. You have to pay attention to what made you sick and do not only the opposite of what made you sick, but you have to start doing what makes you healthy. You know, cure cancer by getting too healthy for cancer, not by bringing you near death and hoping that the cancer dies before you do. What a retarded approach. Za preventivno bi jaz samo lahko povedal, ogromno ljudi dan danes uporablja konoplje za preventivno, ker vemo, ka deluje pomirjajoče. Moramo povedati, da tudi konoplja kakšnih posebnih hudih posledic, tudi ob večjih predoziranjih trajnih nepozroča. Tudi v dolgo trajni uporabi konoplje, sam je uporabljan že zdaj 44 let, Če bi 44 let verjetno pil alkohol, ne vem, kako bi zdaj človek zgledal. Tako, do zdaj je kakšnih res zbranih dokazov o hudih stranskih občinkov konople ni. Razen v Sloveniji, kjer celo se ljudje znajo za strupic CBD, en kot poročja naš NIOZ in pa ministrstv. No, sem to bi vas vprašala, ker ste tako dolgo uporabljate in je to zelo dragocena informacija, ker potem lahko nam poveste. Pravzaprav vprašala bi vas, kaj uporabljati, ne kaj, v kakšni obliki pa koliko približno. Ker to je zelo dolg follow up in je zelo dragoceno to vedeti. Zdaj, ne vem, če sem pravi primer za to, ker moji kolegi pravijo, ko sem potrošnik, zelo velik potrošnik konople, recimo. Jaz sem deset let izključno na konopli oziroma na konopljenih proizvodih, uporabljanju oralno, največje pokadim, ponovadi delam tam med 12, 8, 12, 16 ur na dan, če me kdo vidi brež džointa v ustih, je to težko, verjetno, tudi na biciklo ali kjer drugače. Tako da, ko se enkrat človek navadi, deluje neuroprotektivno, dvomi, ko bi se vse to zdržalo brez tega in vsak si pa mora določiti, ne delam reklame za konoplo, bolj kaj ne daj, ne, 
ampak vsak si mora določiti, vsak ima svojo toleranco, svojo uporabo in si tudi določi prag. Problem pri konopli je to, da vam zamejo v vzniško tudi en teden po uporabi konople, kor več ni učinkov, ker naši naš nesposobne že na ministrstvo, pa cel ta sistem meri metabolite. Ko sem jaz bil v priporu, takrat leta 2012, sem bil pozitiven na metabolite konople po 90-ih dneh pripora, 82-ih. In koliko neumen, neumen in pokvarjen mora biti sistem, ki ti vzame službo, če si pozitiven na metabolite, ki ti vzame vozniško, s tem ti vzame službo, In jaz mislim, ka je predvsem to razlog, da se ljudje ne odločajo za uporabo konople. Strah pred tem, da je prepovedano, ne pred konoplo samo. Jaz bi imela pa še eno konkretno vprašanje v zvezi, če mogoče to bolezen, imate že kaj izkušen s kroničnim hepatitisom, in a je problem je manje apliciranje konoplje peros, glede na poškodbo jeter. There's been a number of people with hep C and other forms that have been in complete remission just by using cannabis once again. It comes back to the same metabolic story. You can control most things if you just control what's making them be what they are. And that's however they're getting their energy. This we all know for 10 years, Milos. <laughs> so, but for the audience, you know, the people, uh, will not get the medicine from uh, pharmaceutical uh, stores and will heal I will, I will explain. Dr. Neubauer, Professor Neubauer was talking uh, yesterday about it and he explained very nice that in very, uh, or in much cases was the reaction worse than, much worse than with natural cannabinoids. Even isolates or uh, synthetics. He was talking about and that we all know why and we all know you know, why they push uh, synthetics or the isolates. Yes, it's a pharma, pharma story with, uh, you know. If you've ever tried a Marinol pill and you're a pothead, you're not going to use Marinol. There's no black market for it because it's not, straight THC is not pleasant. As far as uh, synthetic uh, cannabinoids are concerned, yeah, you can all uh, keep in mind that um, there has been a stalling of developing uh, drugs uh, affecting, uh, synthetic drugs affecting uh, the endocannabinoid uh, system <laughs> since uh, the setback uh, in 2006 when uh, a drug designed to uh, slow down the breakdown of our natural endocannabinoids uh, caused severe damage and even one uh, case of death in a clinical trial. Uh, it's a well-known case uh, which has been investigated and reported, uh, the Bayal uh, study in France with a, with a product of a Portuguese company. And that really was a major setback and I think uh, now all developers of such drugs are compelled to uh, design uh, much more complex and uh, expensive uh, trials, which is slowing the progression in that di uh, direction on part of the uh, industry. And uh, what should people uh, do, ill people, who do not uh, have any help from uh, traditional uh, medicine uh, and, have, uh, and can afford uh, cannabis for themselves? Should they try or not? Or should they suffer with uh, uh, drugs that do not help them? The cannabis revolution is spreading. What we're seeing in Vermont, where they now allow six plants to grow, <coughs> you wind up, your friends are growing six plants, everybody's growing pot. Eventually, what we'll have are communities that help their own members. 
Screw big pharma, screw the government. It's the local communities, the families, the friends that are going to create a different kind of future than the one dictated by big pharma and the horrors that they own in our government. So, let me say something. While the growing, I, I of course support uh, people that are able to grow the medicine or what they consider to be a medicine for themselves. They know exactly what kind of cultivar it could be uh, uh, beneficial for them. Nevertheless, we have a, a great, big experience and growing experience from Canada, and I suppose, and I hope uh, Paul will uh, say more about it. Because in Canada now we have a best regulation of uh, cannabis and the best regulation of cannabis, even before legalization, uh, it had been done for uh, patients that who would, would like to be treated with cannabis, they were allowed to grow five uh, plants for themselves. Now it's allowed for t up to 12 plants. It's really enough. It's really enough for even 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 uh, for even uh, a high consumption. Consumption uh, is enough. But w when I asked my friend Mark Ware, he was a uh, chairman of uh, Can uh, Canada Cannabis Association. Uh, what what the number of the patients uh, who applied for the license? So uh, patients who had a license for medical cannabis also were allowed to ask a, a license for for uh, for growing. And uh, as soon they were approved, and all of them were approved, they could have uh, uh, seeds and a uh, brochure how to grow uh, instructions free of charge from the one of the uh, uh, licensed uh, suppliers. And what happened, you could guess how many patients who uh, had a license, had a seeds, who, how much patients applied for seeds. I will say you a number, 5%. Without any obstacles, no pitfalls, no charge, 5%, only 10% uh, applied for seeds. How many of them are just Ask uh, if we are able to to grow for themselves. Only five percent. This is a real number from the real world, saying that majority of the patients are not willing, and not able, uh, are not ready to all these uh, skills, investments, and uh, all and steadiness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We are speaking about uh, ill patients, ill people. Very few of them are able and would like to grow for themselves. So what uh, my friend uh, Professor Melamed said, it's okay. But majority of the patients would like to have their medicine uh, uh, for affordable price, of good quality, of affordable price for themselves, and not to grow for themselves. So we need to uh, alleviate for them access to medical cannabis, good quality, uh, for affordable price, and to let for some of them who would like to do it and able to do it, to grow for themselves and together. Uh, 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 me, or I will uh, speak English. We are also doing uh, the same thing. We advise people how to grow, but the problem is then how to process the product. If they need some kind of processed product, not the pure uh, uh, flower, then uh, then it can be a problem. But you have to know that under the convention from 1961, growing for your own personal proper, uh, uh, for use is not a criminal offense. Nobody knows this. Maybe a few judges on the Supreme Court in Slovenia, uh, because in the article 28 where is the control of cannabis the hort horticulture and industrial use of cannabis it's excluded out of this convention so all this story about home growing and it is not illegal it's not true we also have uh, 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 some uh, jurisdiction from the supreme court in slovenia uh, where they say that growing for your own purposes is not a criminal offense. It's other thing that we have stupid police and public prosecutor because this is money without, you know, any input that, you know, 
And uh, uh, according to that of uh, the cannabis, we have one that in Slovenia from cannabis, that was the guy who drowned in River Sava when the police chased him with the joint. That's the only one. So it's not illegal to grow, but then it's a problem. Okay. Yeah, uh, since uh, cannabis has been legalized in Canada, when it, the day that it happened last October, I was sitting around with a bunch of friends and we said, big deal, what's changed? Because we'd all been growing it and uh, using it for many years anyway. And the old timers in Canada, the ones I know that have been growing themselves for 20 years, they'll say, I grow safe weed, why the hell would I buy government weed if I can grow it myself? And I think that's a good attitude because if you grow it yourself, you grow with no pesticides, you grow a plant that will detect your... I'm going a bit uh, native here, the people I've been working with, they'll say that the plant that you grow will detect what you need and produce the right terpenoid cannabinoid ratio uh, for what you really need. They also say that you can take enough THC and the pain will eat what is not required. Um, so if you're in chronic pain, you could use as much THC and the pain will eat that THC up. This is a, kind of a ethereal philosophy, but I've been working with Native brothers and uh, uh, I think it's a good philosophy. Anyway, um, legalization in Canada, it started a few years before the actual date of legalization with corporate takeover of um, many aspects of the cannabis industry. I call it mega marijuana, and the greatest problem they're facing, and you will face it here if it ever comes to Slovenia, is you're growing in a northern environment. And we've had many crop failures because the, they've taken growers from who were indoor growers growing in garages and in basements and put them into huge warehouses and greenhouses and expect them to cult cultivate uh, a crop of cannabis. And in northern environments, mold is uh, the greatest um, threat and that happens and we're just going to have to learn I was talking about homeostasis today and Canada will homeostasis in a balance to sort this thing out and my last point is that I fear for medical cannabis because the pharmaceutical industry is all over this they're I believe that's why we're calling it recreational cannabis because they don't don't want us to take it seriously as a medicine, and they can collect their tax anyway. So I'm going to shut up, so it's, it's enough. <laughs> I have to laugh when you guys keep talking about legalization in Canada. I've been arrested twice in the past few years going into Canada with CBD in one case that I bought in Vermont. I drove into Canada, and thankfully I had a credit card so I could bail my car out for $800 while they kept me First, where they uh, put handcuffs on me and harmed me physically doing that, and then kept me in a cold room, but they wouldn't let me use my jacket because my jacket had strings on it that I might hang myself for my CBD arrest. This is to Canada and their freedom. <laughs> uh, at the end, uh, we are now in the very stupid uh, situation. Uh, we, 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 we need to uh, uh, learn about cannabis uh, from the organization like uh, Božidar have, like we have in uh, Serbia, like our friends have in Bosnia, in all other parts of the world. Instead, I need to learn from the uh, scientists or to have a suggestion how to use, uh, how to treat myself from the doctors, not from my friends, who helped uh, themselves uh, and healed themselves. And that's very weird and very strange situation, and uh, isn't it uh, the shame of the whole profession? 
not only doctors, but the scientists as well. Yeah, you know, I know. I also have a question to address in here. Um, <coughs> yeah. I would love to hear more stories about these miraculous healings. Uh, we're, we're talking about extracts here that are officially not allowed, but they're still part of the same plant we, or for not to say you, are examining since many, many years. Science is for the people, pharmaceuticals are not. I would love to encourage everyone here actually, and also you on the stage, to share more of these things, because the more we hear these stories, even if those stories are outside these clinical studies, the more awareness is being created within the public, the more pressure the public is making upon politicians, and the more eyes we have on pharmaceuticals that might not have the purest intentions behind their actions. So please give us more of these stories. And I'm very grateful that there are these stories here and everyone here is able to make a change and we need the story. The stories are out. It's what you said. Everything is out. Every, every person is able to look for the information in the internet. So what do you, from the scientific side, what do you suggest us in this room right now and the public, how can we help you to move forward as a collective? Because it's needed and it's going to change either way. Well, we shouldn't underestimate the, pow uh, the power of those in power. Okay, uh, I spoke with uh, Sue Sisley earlier today and expect expressed my uh, shock at uh, what they were provided with by the authorities in the United States to use in the first in, in the important uh, trial they wanted to do uh, with cannabis for PTSD among uh, uh, veterans uh, in the, in the, the states and she said that many of the doctors, many of the researchers uh, supported her perspective on what was being done but were not prepared to expose themselves to pressures from the establishment and sacrifice their status and the funding for their research, etc., etc. So this is very subtle, okay? And they keep the, these researchers and these scientists in line. Now, if the doctors will cross that line, they will not hesitate to take more serious measures against them. So it is not as simple as it, is, as it appears, okay? As long we are, as we are sidelined and viewed as a minor, uh, element in society which does not threaten the common order, they will bear with us. They will say, okay, let them let off some steam. But if we threaten their industry, they'll come after us and with force. Too many of them. I would like to ask or, well, have a comment on what Ilya was saying uh, just before about uh, patients uh, not growing uh, their own uh, cannabis, which is understandable. I mean, they are ill, they have an, an issue, and now they have to even... I mean, it's, it might be easy to put the scent in the soil, but still you have to give it some care and some attention. So. It's understandable that um, we can't expect from patients to grow their own cannabis then at the end. But uh, here in uh, Europe, we have an interesting model, which I think we should uh, promote a little bit more. It goes along with um, freedom to farm, to farm any kind of plant we want, because that's what we've been doing as humankind since ever. Um, and um, it's popping up in different countries, but for now, for example, Spain is most known by it, by the Cannabis Social Clubs, which is a wonderful model in my mind. There are some clubs which are collaborating with 
doctors also very closely. So maybe one, I know of one. <laughs> But uh, that's an interesting model, how a what community... What is your question, please? It's a comment on what, what? Ilya was saying. And uh, I think cannabis social clubs could be an answer in how to provide good material to people and also be an environment when you, where you can do at least observational studies, if nothing else. So it yes, can go, in, in it Israel, can... in Israel, we have one ex, one such experience. We have a Canatib, you know, Canatib. This is a cooperative of the patients, only with uh, a valid license. They are organized in the cooperative uh, that uh, applied for co uh, cooperative license for growing. Now it's under review uh, in the uh, official bodies. They are trying to keep it down. They are trying not to allow them. They, they made exactly what you mean. Uh, it's not social club. It's a, a, a assistance for growing, for patients, their own medicine, uh, uh, according to their license. They have a license. They would like to, be, to grow for themselves. And they are, uh, to, all together they have enough skills, uh, investments, and uh, experience in order to make it uh, better quality. Now our officials trying to keep them down and not to issue this license, but I suppose this is a very good model. I hope it will be supported further. Um, I would like to appeal to the Slovenian news. Niti ni vprašanje za vas, ampak glede na to, kar je bilo včeraj objavljeno in na ta fake news in na to, kar smo se danes pogovarjali, kako boste odreagirali na vaše kolege? Aha, za, za strupitev. Ja, ampak novinari so slišali to zdaj? Na koga ali? Ampak katerega zdaj mislite novinari z dela? Na vse? Je kakšen novinar tukaj, ki se je pripravljen odzvati na to vprašanje? Novinar je se bo odzvali za svojimi članki, po moje. Dobro. Novinar je se bo odzvali za svojimi članki, ampak prav bi bilo, eni že sprašujejo, kje je ministrstvo za zdravje, pa nije za jemlje te podatke. Lažejo, potvarjajo podatke, poneverjajo listine. Mislim, to, kar se dogaja na ministrstvu za zdravje, je pač tako, kak je. Ampak pred dvema letoma, glih zdaj je dve pa pol leti, smo razpravljali na gospodarskem razstavišču o dveh smrtih zaradi THC-ja, če se spomnite. V zadnjih dveh tedni je bilo nekaj člankov v slovenskem časopisju, da je došlo do hudih zastropitev s CBD-jem. Da pa mi povejte, kakšna je tista doza CBD-ja, ki bi jo moral nekdo zaužiti, da bi prišlo do zastropitve. Mislim, koliko je CBD toksičen, to pa lahko poveste. I assume you're referring to, there was a recent publication, I think it came out of GW Pharma, and if you look at the data that they show, they didn't have any harm occurring until they did this very high dose. And I don't remember what the dose exactly was, but I remember calculating if you were buying their drug, how much dose it would be. And it was the equivalent of taking something like $35,000 a day worth of their drug. So it's unlikely that people were going to do it. <laughs> uh, in Israel, we have, uh, se we have uh, several cases of uh, children that uh, we occasionally use the, the cookies uh, that were given their parents uh, by the license uh, uh, because, because seven years ago we were allowed, our patients were allowed to use cookies for uh, according to their license for the medical purposes. But sometimes uh, parents uh, just did not keep, kept it uh, well and the children uh, used it and they were poisoned. 
uh, it was expected that we poisoned because they used several cookies at the same time and uh, much uh, after the, uh, several hours we have a record of two or three cases that were uh, small children were poisoned and uh, but uh, you see that nothing bad has happened uh, in two in two ca- no no one were in coma uh, in t- in two cases uh, two of them were slept for the 24 hours in one case it was 18 hours in one time they were placed on the intensive uh, care unit but just for the pre- pre- precautions not uh, not severe uh, disturbances for uh, for pulse and uh, for uh, blood pressure uh, had been happened just deep sleep deep, very deep sleep for the long time it happened it could happen it's uh, obvious uh, poisoning and uh, overdose that could happen since then in ministry of health forbidden in israel to uh, uh, to uh, to give the patients uh, cookies because of uh, inability of the patients to be uh, to keep it out of the reaching of the children so it could happen nothing bad has happened uh, all the children that were poisoned were absolutely good now and a very good follow up nothing bad happened with them no uh, no, no they, their life was out of any any real danger they just were overdosed and uh, this is uh, all harm what caused is it Pity, yes, it is pity. It should not be done, but uh, this it should be uh, done with precautions. So we need to be know that it could be happened uh, everywhere. But uh, you know how many uh, uh, poisoning with uh, uh, many other substances happened in the in the real life. Okay, but don't blame cannabis. Just uh, it should be kept out of the children because of the sa- general yeah, safety measures. Ilya, question was about CBD and the poisoning. It was. It was. They had. A, they had a, a cannabis. They have a, a, in their cookies. They were presented uh, and CBD and THC together. I do not uh, know any kind of the report that's uh, saying that CBD provide alone provides a long-term poisoning. Why do you call it poisoning? It's not we the poison. Po- poison is something that is bad for you, a toxin. Cannabis is not a poison. If you overdose on it and you sleep, that's not a poison. It was, it was in the paper. I know, but no, that, no, that's but my point. You're, you, should, you should point out that it's not a poison it rather is, it than is repeating o- overdose, it. Overdose. Yes. Overdose is the correct word. I agree with you. People should be aware that people, when they take too much cannabis and have really negative paranoia effects, one of the things that cannabis does is it reduces acetylcholine levels. And the acetylcholine levels, when low like that, lead to that psychological profile. And you can take citicholine, which is a compound that is your normal body's precursor to acetylcholine, and it knocks out those negative symptoms. Tako. Morda bi še vsakega izmed naših gostov za zaključno besedo prosili za nek način vaše sporočilo. Just one question maybe. Can you assess the damage of possible pro- prohibition again of cannabis of all sorts? What is Slovenia trying to do now? And the stance of our Ministry of Health that no growing in Slovenia is necessary. That sounds like the same idiocy that I hear coming out of Serbia. Where, where, yeah, we don't need cannabis because we have morphine. Just use more morphine. <laughs> the damage, the damage for the patient's health is uh, by the two, two means. First, it's avoiding to use very useful medications that could be used and should be used for the medical purposes under good uh, medical follow-up and surveillance. And second one, it's a preve- it's a, this is, so first is a prevention of the medicine. Second is a, uh, second that other medication uh, that this patients that were unable to treat uh, themselves or to have uh, access to affordable cannabis of good quality, they are not believed to medical system. So they are 
do not apply for referrals for other doctors. So they, this is another kind of damage of lack of trust to medical system, and this is very pity. Yeah, well, I'd say uh, your question uh, actually reflects a problem that is much broader than just the access to cannabis. Tako, uh, naš čas se isteko, prašanja, če imaste še kaj, morda v predprostoru, uh, torej, na tem trenu, uh, po vaših uh, sklepnih besedah se zaključuje odrski del, jutri še sledi torta, ampak tista že nekaj druga. Z Tako, uh, prosil bi vas, vsakega od vas, za eno sklepno sporočilo na tem kongresu. So, my remark is uh, just do everything to legalize cannabis for treatment. I hope that it's in your hands because there is no way back. When it started, it will spread. I am not afraid that uh, it will be prohibited again. No. It's prohibited, but it will go forward. So it's in your hand. You must show them that it's necessary. Patient must show that it's necessary. They must use it as it, as it is in the Czech Republic. It's legal, but it's very expensive, so they cannot buy it. So they grow themselves in not ideal situation. I prefer that if they have uh, material which is checked, that it's uh, everything okay and there is no what is inside. But uh, now even police uh, uh, is silent mostly when they see that patients use it for treatment. Hvala. Yes, only the way. So I fully support uh, what uh, my older friend uh, Lumer said. I absolutely agree with it. So this is a absolutely necessity, necessity to legalize cannabis for medical purposes, to educate patients, to educate caregivers, to educate policymakers, and to bring them to your side. Because, of course, the, the point of uh, never return we already crossed. So I also do not afraid that cannabis will be prohibited anyway now and many other countries where the cannabis was prohibited and even it was a death, a death penalty for cannabis use. For example, like in Thailand, now Thailand is uh, growing cannabis for medical purposes for themselves. So it's huge, huge uh, step ahead and many, so it, they had an awful uh, regulation there, now they changed it completely. So we have a very good example. I'm supposing your wonderful European country your regulation should be like the same as well as uh, in Netherlands, uh, Switzerland, Austria, at, least, at least in Austria. So it's only a matter of the pressure to your regulators, to your lawmakers. It should be available. And, but in this case, you should learn from our experience what to do and what not to do. So Israeli system was very good once not optimal, but very good. Now we are changing to the uh, not so good manner. Please uh, look as example of the best regulation in Canada and advise your policymakers to follow them. This is a uh, big democratic country, so you could follow this, the example. Thank you. Maybe we should switch to a musical uh, accord. Uh, I we remember, we all know uh, Aretha Franklin, and we'd start with R-E-S-E-P-C-T. -E respect the people, respect us as individuals, and um, uh, don't fall for the claims of the tailors from the story of the emperor and his clothes. <laughs> Apparently, he isn't wearing all that much. <laughs> because, in truth, cannabis is an essential nutrient for optimizing human health, and more and more people are, lo are learning that. Governments have no right to regulate that food other than food quality of people selling the food, like they do for health purposes. That makes sense. So my advice is everybody must get stoned. Grow in peace.
peace. <laughs> okay. Uh, torej, najlepša hvala za vaš trud, za vašo prisotnost tukaj, za vse, kar ste poskusili nekako prenesti našim slušateljem. Verjamem, da se vidimo tudi naslednje leto v Sloveniji. Tako, Božo, hvala tudi tebi, vse ekipi, ki je poskrbela, da smo vsi skupaj lahko nekako doživeli to, kar se je zgodilo v Dvorani Union 4. in 5. oktober Slovenija. Thank hvala you, vam guys. za vašo prisotnost.